Okay. There we go. We got it all working now. I hope everybody can hear me. I hope everybody's having a fantastic uh, summer. It's been a long year for everybody here. It's 2020. You know, obviously everybody knows what's going on in 2020 in the with the viruses going wild. Uh, we've got viruses, human and rabbit, in fact, in the United States that we're, we're battling. Um, so those of us that have rabbits are obviously doing a lot more right now to uh, try to protect the rabbits. And so, but I've had been, been trying to work on some of these videos and a number of them uh, I've got kind of put away here a bit have done a little bit of work with but I wanted to do some some videos here real quick to start off with the next series which is kind of an extension of what we did in uh, genetics 101 uh, this is going to be our genetics 202 series and it's going to kind of expand on some things that we've talked about in the first run, which was kind of a rudimentary, uh, basic understanding of what's going on with your breedings. I've had a lot of emails and a lot of uh, comments and, and people asking for, for more stuff with regards to genetics. Uh, and some maybe we'll go into some deeper detail on some things. And one of the most common ones that I get is regarding blue-eyed white uh, in Vienna. Uh, Blue-eyed white is a really super popular color uh, in some breeds, particularly uh, Holland Lops. You'll see a few in Mini Lops. You'll, uh, you know, Mini Rex blue-eyed whites is common. Uh, Netherland Dwarf has blue-eyed white. Uh, really, there's you could probably find a blue-eyed white in just about any breed, and uh, it's it's a gene. That focuses entirely on the V locus. So if you're not familiar with blue-eyed white, go check out the the uh, blue-eyed white uh, videos. I'll put a card up in top here so that you guys can um, uh, go back and refer to that if you haven't seen that. And that'll give you a kind of a basic understanding. But just to recap with what we learned in that video is, is that it has a lot of caveats. Uh, with how it's used and how it should be used. And the only time you should be using a blue-eyed white or, uh, or a, which is a, basically a rabbit that we do not know anything about its genetic makeup, except that it contains two copies of the Vienna, uh, the blue-eyed white uh, alleles, two lowercase v's. That's the recessive trait, which is what brings out. you got to have both copies there for that to come out. Um, now what we do have happen from time to time is you'll get what we call Vienna March or Vienna Carriers. Vienna March typically will have a white spot on the forehead. They almost look like a Dutch, uh, a white mark on their face. Uh, sometimes though it can be as simple as just a white patch on a foot or a white patch uh, uh, somewhere on their body or their head or an ear. Uh, and even if they do, sometimes in some cases, you'll have a black rabbit that has blue eyes, and I'm talking about deep blue coloration, it's still a Vienna marked. So you got to look at those eye colors uh, when you're working with these rabbits to get them, you know, properly uh, notated where they're supposed to, what kind of rabbit they are. So it doesn't matter what the prior color is it could be a chestnut it could be black it could be otter it could be all kinds of different things but to get this vm part we have to actually look at the rabbit and that genetic string means that um, it only carries one copy of the vienna uh, expression and so a capital v and a lowercase v it's only carrying one copy of that expression. Now, Vienna carriers will be a lot different because you cannot visually see the that expression, that Vienna expression, on the rabbit. It's not visible to your eye in inspection of the rabbit. So it could be a chestnut that has it looks like just like a chestnut. Unfortunately, but however, you know, maybe it's out of a blue-eyed white. 
and you're trying to uh, create that blue-eyed white um, thing and so you're importing in some better typey animals to try to uh, to improve it and so what ends up happening is is you get uh, a, a chestnut that you can't visibly see anything and so you would get the same combination the 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 genotype in writing that it, it's it's exactly the same and a lot of people get that confused you know you can get a via marked a via carrier they're both exactly the same rabbit they're written exactly the same way and the only difference between a vmvc writing and a blue-eyed white is is that a blue-eyed white you might know some of this information but all that's important is that it is uh, two lowercase v's um, you know if you're working with a lot of blacks in your blue-eyed white program and importing blacks or you're taking blue and whites to blacks to create the carriers in the marked rabbits um, you will have a little bit more understanding obviously it would be a self-based probably rabbit versus the agoutis if you were using chestnuts and it really depends on the breed of what you're using for your best animals to improve the quality and type of the blue-eyed white to be on the show table uh, for instance netherland dwarf you're probably you, you can find some nice blacks but you're far often going to find more black otter and chestnut that are going to be better and so you might be using black otter and chestnut netherland dwarf where in like holland lops torts are kind of the rule uh, black tort would be um, the most common and also have the best quality type of all the varieties and so therefore you'd probably be using a lot of torts to uh, put into your Vienna program and if that's the, the goal of improving it. So I hope this kind of helps understand, gives you some understanding of how this works. Now, if I want to take this animal, if I want to create more blue-eyed white, I, I, you want to start with a solid blue-eyed white rabbit. That's what you want to do. We import, we, where people just keep calling um, here we go so what we've got is blue-eyed white uh, to to uh, chestnuts uh, that we could use to have carriers or we could take a normal let's let's, let's just say we're using chestnuts for instance a normal chestnut is going to be this written this way a b c d e all the, all of the you know you got a goody it's black it's full color it doesn't matter on the dilution part of it uh, and then as far as full you want full extension it is it, it's not going to have the blue-eyed white thing we can write that we know that it doesn't carry blue-eyed white for instance and so it's two capital V's, and that makes it really easy for you to, to understand the difference between a chestnut with no Vienna and a chestnut with Vienna, whether it's a carrier or not. If I breed these two rabbits together, um, we might, we're probably, depending on what this, 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 this carries, and we really don't even really care because all we care about is this one locus point. We only care about the V locus. We don't care what happens anywhere else other than, I will say, again, like we talked about in some of the early videos, is you want to ensure that none of the rabbits have chocolate in them and that none of the rabbits have what we call shaded or you're like your Siamese sable or your, or your Himalayan or Hemi breed, uh, Hemi coloration, which those all kind of fall into the sea locus. So no chocolates. No, uh, I'd also avoid ruby-eyed white. That's just my personal preference, just because you the ruby-eyed white can override your blue-eyed white. So if you're using ruby-eyed whites, I'd avoid that as well. Uh, and also, it just, you just don't know. I mean, yeah, you eliminate the whole shaded thing, but you still can't tell whether it's got chocolate in the background. And eventually... Over time of breeding and line breeding and working your program, you're going to start throwing a, uh, as many ruby-eyed whites 
uh, as you will, blue-eyed whites, and those ruby-eyed whites are technically blue-eyed white. So, um, but because of how that 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 allele works, it'll it'll erase that blue part, uh, the Vienna part and just kind of mask it over and, and just eliminate it. But it's still hiding in the genetics. It's still hiding in the genetics. So, but we're just gonna say that maybe we get a chestnut. We can get a chestnut out of this combination. Maybe we get a black. And then maybe we get a, a black VM. And maybe we get a chestnut. Now, one thing you have to understand when you get this kind of a pairing is that the only, when we're talking about just V locus, that this blue-eyed white can only transmit one allele at each locus point, and that means that it will transmit Vienna to every single rabbit, a small V. And the reason we know this is a black VM is because maybe it, we visually see that it's Vienna mark. Maybe it has a white spot on its head. Okay, so we know that it can only transmit a lowercase v. It's transmitting that ex that Vienna expression to every single kit. Now this rabbit this cannot cannot transmit any Vienna because it doesn't have it. So it can only transmit a capital V. So in all reality, this is actually a chestnut VC. This will be a black VC, and this will be a chestnut VC. Does that make sense? And then, of course, the black VM we actually know is a V and a mark because it's got a marking. Now, how do you get back to making blue-eyed whites? Well, you would obviously take these animals back to a, a blue-eyed white. So let's just, for instance, let's just pick one. Let's just do the, let's do the black VC. We'll take the black VC and we're going to pair it to the blue eyed white. And of course, genetically, this one, I'm just going to put in parentheses, this is a capital V, lowercase v. And of course, our blue eyed white is two lowercase v's like that. Okay, and maybe we get, from this pairing, maybe we get a blue-eyed white, maybe we get a black, maybe we get a black uh, VM, and maybe we get a chestnut. Just like that. That means that these what the blue-eyed white obviously we know has to be two lowercase v's. It's got two copies of the Vienna expression. We know again because we paired it to a blue-eyed white that everything got the Vienna expression in some form. But this rabbit here only transmitted, you know, uh, its its Vienna expression one time. The rest of the time, it transmitted a capital V, just like so. So in all essence, this is again a VC, and this is a chestnut VC as well. So again, all of this here is more rabbits. You've got a whole bunch of carriers here in Vienna marks. you got one blue-eyed white and a whole bunch of this. And of course, and then you can do blue-eyed white, and you can cross blue-eyed white back to a parent or back to the original animal to create more blue-eyed whites with the best health and improved quality of type that way. Or you could take, again, these back, you know, just take uh, maybe one of these back to the, to the black VC. So we have a black Vienna carrier, and I'll just draw a line here to separate this. Maybe we take that black Vienna carrier and we put it with a chestnut carrier. Neither one of them express uh, the the Vienna at all because they're both they both looks like a black and it looks like a, a chestnut. And we pair that. Maybe we're going to get blue-eyed white, 
blue-eyed white. Uh, maybe we get a chestnut. And then maybe we get a black. Okay? Now, this is where it gets really where you start to run into problems. You have Vienna Carrier and a Vienna Carrier. They still both have that expression hidden recessive behind its dominant dominant V, which is um, why we're not seeing uh, this why it's a black rabbit and a chestnut. Okay? Um, so, but this is the pairing we get. So we got a blue-eyed white. We know those are two lowercase v's, two lowercase v's. This is where it gets ugly, okay? Because we're using two Vienna carriers that show no representation. We know they're carriers because they were produced out of this pairing. But they don't show any visible signs. And we got a chestnut and a black that show no visible signs. We know that they got a capital V. Okay, we know that. But this second Aleo, we don't know what they got. We don't know if if both these rabbits transmitted a capital V to these two animals. So we've created two animals that we don't know if they're blue-eyed white carriers or not. We have no idea. The odds are in the favor that we do that they are both carriers, but it's no guarantee. And so when I talk about the caveat of saying, well, I've got a chestnut for, you know, and you're going to sell a chestnut to somebody that doesn't work in blue eyed white. It really, you, you, you really don't know what this animal is. It appears as chestnut, but it could be chestnut Vienna carrier because there's about a 50% chance, roughly exactly 50% chance, that, that you're going to be carrying Vienna expression with the lowercase v in these two animals. And the only way you can prove whether they are Vienna carriers, and it's not even 100% guarantee, is to breed this back to blue-eyed white. That's why it's so important you bring color, you bring high quality color animals into a blue eyed white program, but nothing goes back into from a blue eyed white program into your other colors because you will spread this around and eventually your entire herd is going to be quote unquote infected with Vienna and it really reduces the value of the animal. It also will destroy not only your color program, but the color programs of other people. And so you really need to think this out down the road. You know, your first pairings worked out great. Your second pairing worked out great. Now you're into your third pairings. You're starting down a path that really causes problems. I hope that explains it a little bit better for some of you all that were asking questions about Vienna and how it over time really can affect your program. You know, again, as we look right here, we took the, these two rabbits and we produced this. We took a, one of these animals back to a blue eyed white. And so we took our, our black VC back to that blue eyed white. And then we produced this. And then we took, you know, two animals uh, we took one of these animals, maybe we already had a, another chestnut VC, you know, obviously you wouldn't want to be breeding siblings, but, but let's just say that we took it to a, a, another VC that we had in our barn that would work. And, you know, we take this black VC right here, we bred it to another chestnut VC that we had, and this is what we produced. Yes, you can get blue eyed white that you may not get any blue-eyed whites too. It's entirely plausible that you get no blue-eyed whites, entirely plausible that you get VM and VC or no Vienna at all. I mean, it it's really depends on what the, each rabbit's going to transmit to uh, to each individual kit. So 
Uh, I did, hate to start off with Blue Eyed White in this series because it is such a complicated one, but I hope that it helps you guys in understanding really how everything works as far as longevity of a program. Always remember, no chocolate, no shaded, no ruby eyed white in a, in a blue eyed white program. That'll screw with your eye color and give you the wrong stuff. Always import high quality color animals into a blue eyed white program for future work. But nothing comes back out of a blue eyed white program to go help your colors, colored animals such as your chestnuts, blacks, and so on and so forth. Hope that clears up a lot of, of the questions. Uh, don't forget to ask questions down below in the comments. Uh, I'll get this one posted up as soon as possible. And we will get started on some more of this series. We're going to do uh, the next one I think we're going to do is about uh, pedigrees and what are the value of pedigrees, not only to a breeding program, but are they really worth the money uh, that, that, that you think they might be worth? So I uh, hope those, that will help you guys when you're, you start getting into uh, buying pedigreed animals and understanding that, that the value of them and at the same time being able to take them with a grain of salt. So until next time, have a great one. See you on the next video.